Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm Ed Juenka, and I'm here with my good brother, director of the Central Statistics Office, Brother Raymond Phillips. Good to see you. It's good to be here, Ed Juenka. Yes, man. Uh, the, the, what happened to the Development Planning Unit? Well, what actually happened is that a decision was taken to remove the planning function, you know, from the, the from my office. Okay. And was placed in um, MFU, which is Macro Fiscal Unit in Finance. You know, they figured that, you know, given the importance of, of, of information, that my office should concentrate strictly on, you know, providing the information that is needed, you know, for us to make the decisions that needs to be made. So you they split in two. You got a, mic, a macro fiscal unit. Well, it wasn't actually split in two. Actually, that unit was created by, by, by finance, and they thought that it would be more, it would be better placed you know, so, in, so you, in that unit. Yeah. So you're focused um, specifically now on, on, on statistics gathering, compiling, and analysis? Specifically, yes. Oh, okay. All right. I was wondering if the planning unit was still in existence as a planning functionary, and you had moved into just uh, data gathering alone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I see, how that, I see how that works. Now, there's a lot going on. Uh, what, 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 what has been your mandate as uh, now being a central statistics office? What, 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 what are your terms of reference? Well, the mandate remains the same. Mm -hmm. Basically providing timely, accurate information. However, what the, what the thought was is that they, they, they felt that we were being a bit sidetracked by actually also, you know, being involved in the planning aspect. You know, they, they, their thoughts are, you know, let's provide, the, let's just provide the information. Let somebody else bother with, or let some other department bother with actually using the information in the planning process. Okay. And so now you uh, 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 strictly gather information. I know that you're going to conduct a survey. Um, yes. Talk to us about the, uh, the survey yes. you're getting ready to conduct. As we speak, you know, we are getting prepared to, to conduct our first labor force survey. You know, we thought it very important at this juncture to do such a survey because, you know, since 2008, we have had an economic downturn, well, a global economic downturn, and it has, you know, in, in, in a sense, you know, kind of disrupted our, 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 our um, very, very traditionally low unemployment rate because, I mean, as you know, there were quite a number of um, reports of persons losing their jobs and businesses closing down, and this is something that, you know, we were not, that we are not really accustomed to. We have always enjoyed healthy economic growth. And that is evident in the fact that we, in, we import so much labor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it goes without saying, once you import labor, it means that you have work. And we have always been in the position where, you know, we import labor. So we have always been in that, in that good economic standing. But, you know, post 2008, you know, it, it, it threw a little spoke, it really threw um, a, wrench in a wrench in, in yeah, our in spokes, in, in, right? In wheel, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, you know, that we, we, it made it, um, you know, pertinent for us to now, you know, do this labor force survey and see where we are, you know, as it relates to our employment status. So you were unable to, 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 to get a grasp of what the, imp the actual impact of the, the economic slowdown was. Exactly. And so because of that, um, you were unable to, the governments of the day were unable to make perhaps the decisions that was needed to that make in order to, exactly. to, to mitigate that circumstance. Yes, to arrest this whole, this whole mm -hmm. situation. You know, it, it, they need to know exactly what's happening on the ground, where mm -hmm. it's happening, how it's happening, and that kind of thing. It's very, very important. Okay. So the labor force, is this the first um, of its kind, the labor force survey? Have you had a labor force survey before? No, we have never done a labor force survey. And as I said, simply because we have not in the past had an unemployment problem. There was no need to do that. There was no need to do one. Mm -hmm. But now we are not sure what's going on, so we need to have one done. Okay. So this is going to begin when? When are you going to start the, on the survey? Well, as we speak, the training is now going on mm -hmm. for the persons that are going to go out into the field and do the interviews. And we expect to go into the field coming Monday, the 19th. Okay. And are you going around to each household? How is that? How is the survey going to be done? Well, what we have done, we have selected a sample. Mm -hmm. 
and this sample is done in proportions. So we're going to do a proportion of households in each district, right? So we have already drawn our sample. We expect to cover at least 700 households, which will be approximately around 7% of our total households in, 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 in the country. You know, so we, we want to get a good representative sample, you know, to make sure that the results really speak to what the situation is on the ground. Okay. And, and what's going to be the lo logistics of the information gathering? You're going to go around, you're going to have um, uh, persons uh, going around asking questions. And what, what, how, how, how should the public respond to you and, and, and what can we expect during this survey process? Well, yes, we are going to have persons going from, from house to house. So, you know, we are just asking that the general public, you know, be understanding and, you know, be cooperative. I mean, there are a number of questions on there, but it's, it's an effort for us to, to, to see what's going on with each, in the, with, with each individual household. Because, I mean, as you indicated, the whole idea is to, you know, if there are issues, address the issues. So we will have persons coming to the houses, having face-to-face -face interviews. Um, you know, the questionnaire could take between 20 minutes to 30 minutes, you know, depending on how many persons are in the households, you know, some, somewhat similar to the census. But the questionnaire is not nearly as long as the census, so, you know, we don't expect that persons will be engaged as long as they were when we did the census. Um, you know, people, persons will, will, the questions are not sensitive questions, just easy questions to answer. But at the end of the day, you know, we would have information that speaks to exactly what's going on on the ground as it relates to our, un our employment slash unemployment situation. Okay. And so you're going, you're going to bring a farm and you're going to help assist the persons in the household to, to fill the farm out to get the information that you need? Or are you going to have the farm and ask them questions? Yes, that's the, the latter. We're going to have the form, we're going to ask the questions, and you're going to yeah, do the writing. but they will see exactly what's being recorded on the form because it will be a face-to-face -face, um, interaction. So, you know, nothing will go on there that, that you did not, that the individual did not say. So, you okay. know, so they could be rest assured that, you know, what they say is what we'll capture. Now, what about um, the concern about intrusiveness, that the, um, somebody might ask a, a question that I might feel that uh, is, is a personal question that I don't want to answer and might feel that's intrusive. Um, how do I respond to that? And, uh, you know, is there, are there penalties for not answering? Uh, how how, 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 how inf effective is the, the enforcement of the gathering techniques? But there, there are always concerns because, I mean, some questions one person might consider intrusive, another person might think, hey, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. Yes, but every person that is going to visit the households have to take an oath of confidentiality. So therefore, they are not supposed to divulge any mm -hmm. information that is collected. There are penalties. We have a statistical act of, that was um, done in 2005 that speaks to penalties you know, for persons um, divulging information collected out in the field. There are also penalties you know, for persons who don't want to cooperate and comply with you know, the, the enumerators when they come to, you know, the household to gather, gather the information. However, we would prefer not to have to refer to our statistical act, you know, because, you know, what we do is in an effort to better, to make things better for everyone that lives in this country. Well, that's interesting. I think we ought to know what the penalties are. I mean, I never thought that there were any penalties. I just uh, asked the question, knowing that we would need some sort of enforcement. But now that you mentioned that there may be penalties for not complying with the, the persons that come to ask the questions, you have to let us know what those penalties are. Well, the penalties are, and of course, um, a case would have to be made through the Attorney General's office. But if we do get to a, a, a position where we have to, you know, enforce penalties on someone. The penalties, I think, about three months in prison. Hmm. I mean, <coughs> I would hope well, it never a, gets to that. That's a considerable penalty. <laughs> yes, but it, it worked both ways. It's, this, it's actually the penalties for, for persons who, who are under my watch. If they divulge information, the penalties double. So it's six months for them six and months three months for me if I don't comply. Exactly. Okay. So, you know, we, I, we, we think it was, it, was, it, was, it was best to make it that way because it just goes to show how how serious we take gathering your information, you know. So we want you to take it serious also to give us 
your information. What kind of questions are you going to be asking? Give us some samples. Well, first of all, we establish, you know, the, who is the head of the household and that kind of thing. And then we would go on to ask, you know, um, whether persons are working or not. We also isolate persons over the age of 15 because we're not going to be asking questions of persons under the age of 15 because our target population here is the working, is the, the working age population. You know, we'll ask questions as to, you know, the type of occupation you, 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 you have, the type of industry that you work in. We'll be interested to know, um, you know, how many hours you work, how many months you work. We will also be interested in your, <coughs> sorry, your income. However, we never ask anyone their direct income. Mm -hmm. We would normally ask them to give us a range in which your income falls because we know that one could be you know, quite sensitive and persons are not too eager to divulge that type of information. Um, we would also ask questions about unemployed because we also want to know if persons are unemployed, why are they unemployed? You know, have they taken steps, you know, to, 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 to find employment? We're also going to ask questions of persons not in the labor force. These could be students, retired persons, but you know, by the same token, we also want to find out why persons choose not to be in the labor force. Because remember, a person who is of working age, who does not work, who does not want to work, is not in the labor force. Mm -hmm. So we want to know why that person choose not to be in the labor force. You know, so it's, it's a, a host of questions, but at the end of the day, we want to ascertain, you know, what is the position, you know, as it relates to these three specific um, statuses. Okay. Okay. We have to take a break for a word from our sponsors. And when we come back, we're going to um, take a look at what you're going to do with this uh, the information, what you hope to, 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 to analyze from it, what you hope to glean from it, and whether this information is going to be just for the BVI or shared regionally with um, other, other countries and other organizations. We'll be right back with more Spotlight and more Mr. Raymond Phillips right after these words from our sponsors. Spotlight is brought to you by Tortola Concrete Limited and H. Laverty Stout Community College. Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm here with Director of Central why I just can't remember that. The Central Statistic Office, Brother Raymond Phillips, and we have a really good conversation going. If you just join us about uh, our upcoming labor force survey that's going to be conducted, and that's going to start again on Monday. Yes, on Monday, January the nineteenth. Yes, and it's going to go for how long? Well, we expect for it to run for a month. So okay. we hope to have our people out of the field by February the twentieth. Okay. And you had your people train. You were talking off the air about some training. Yes, presently um, the, 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 the enumerators are being trained. Um, we had they're the trained and, and to do what? what they're, but what? they're actually being trained in how to administer the questionnaire, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, questionnaire etiquette and those kind of things form part of the training. You know, we also, they also go through the questions, you know, what answers to expect and, you know, in the event, you know, persons are being a little bit difficult how to you know reassure them that the information that they're given you know is, is um is necessary information and of course it's confidential information so those are the kind of things that they, that they try to impress upon them you know and also you know teach them basically you know how to how to conduct yourself you know when you when you're actually conducting the interviews you know make the the interviewee comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, make them feel as if, you know, giving the, the information it, it is not a problem, you know. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all in an effort to get maximum, maximum res response. Uh, pa pa participation. Participation, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so is, is the information going to remain within the territory? Are you going to, are this information going to be shared regionally or internationally? Well, well I need to, to, to say that th this whole exercise is being done in, in, um, in, in collaboration with the OECS. So um, the information definitely, definitely will be shared with the OECS. The OECS is actually very instrumental in, in having the, the survey done because they are responsible for us having you know, financial and technical support in, in getting it done. But of course at the end of the day, 
the information belongs to the to the BVI, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. But definitely, it would be shared, be shared. regionally. And and, and 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 what what's the anticipated use uh, of the information? Um, well, well, first of all, the unemployment rate is one of the most sensitive indicators in in, in any country. So first of all, we need to know what that is. No. And when that's the indicator of, of the, the, the strength the, of the economy. Well, it's an indicator of, you know, the, actually the weakness of the economy, okay. slash strength of the economy. Okay. Because, mm -hmm. of course, if the rate is high, it kind of points to a weak economy. If the rate is low, it points to a strong economy. Right. But that information is going to be available by the demographics of the country. So we're going to know whether it's the young unemployed Mm -hmm. or the old that are on it, well not the old, but the more matured mm -hmm. individuals are, are unemployed. Is the, is the employment higher among males or females? You know, is the, is the employment, if the, is the unemployment more prevalent in the in East End as opposed to West End? You know, um, is the unemployed, is the unemployed, you know, the, the, the single the single parent or, you know, that kind of thing. So Education it, levels. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. So so what it does, it, 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 it gives the, 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 the current administration the tools to, to, to zero in on, on where the problems, as it relates to unemployment, where the problems are. And it, it, you can only address a problem if you know what it is and where it is and how it is. You know, so... The main use of this information would be for the power that be to look at it, look at it in, in specific terms, and then they should be able to, 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 to frame policies, you know, to, to address the situation if there is one. Okay. So, social economic planning? Ver yes, very important for that. Mm -hmm. Now... <coughs> This, the, just shift a little bit. The the statistics office, the central statistics office, uh, will also be gathering other types of information. Oh yes, uh, well, not just not just uh, labor force survey. information. Definitely, the labor right. force survey <coughs> farms. That's, are, that's your are focus very, right now. Yes, it's our focus mm -hmm. right now. But the farms are a very small part of you know what we do, because we we can we can, we 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 collect a host of different information. Um, we have it broken down into two specific, well, three categories. We have economic statistics, we have social statistics, and then we have our national accounts statistics. The economic statistics is the one that speaks to trade, tourism, you know, financial statistics, international business corporations, and things of that nature. Our social statistics speaks to things like, you know, our vital statistics, things like births and deaths and which are important to know as it relates to our population growth and you know things of that nature. And of course our national accounts speak specifically to it's it's also part of economic statistics, but we because it is so important because this one actually measures the strength of the economy. So we thought it pertinent to separate it from the economic statistics and concentrate on making sure that we have that estimated regularly. So you can tell at any given point in time whether the, whether the, 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 econ the economy is growing or if it's not growing. Mm -hmm. That's the specific function of that statistics. Okay. And how... Uh up to date, uh, these statistics are going to be uh, the, the real time because you know, uh, <coughs> a lot of instances you you ask for for data, uh, it's a year or two behind. Uh, how how uh, up to date we gonna, uh, this, uh, the the information is going to be? Uh, well, the, the, it, it varies from from statistics to statistics. Eh? Um, we try our best to keep them as up to date as we can, but a lot of the data is collected, well, it's produced on an annual basis, mm -hmm. right? So you, you probably will not get anything for 2013 until we are into 2014. And one of the things also is that a lot of the information that we collect, you know, is collected manually. So when it gets into my office, I have to have some of my people sit down and actually, you know, have it entered 
or have it automated. And sometimes that takes some time. But one of the other problems is that we um, have to answer to third parties. In other words, we collect the data from elsewhere. And um, sometimes they might not have it ready, you know, when we, you know, request it. And we have no choice but to wait until they are ready. So, you know, those are some of the challenges that, that we have. So when, when some of the statistics are not as up to date as, you know, we would prefer, those are some of the issues that we have to contend with on a daily basis. You know, but we do our best to try to keep it, <coughs> excuse me, as up to date as possible. But within the, the government structure itself, uh, is a lot of the data that you just mentioned, births and deaths, uh, health issues, social issues, trade issues, um, incorporation, business incorporations, um, saving, a, say, well, saving a company in the, in, the, in the banking industry, uh, housing starts, um, mm -hmm. re, you know, regarding how it would be in, in the town and country planning. So a lot of the information sounds like it would be in, within the government sphere uh, already. Uh, and how, how is, uh, what, what's gonna happen to automate uh, a, a system whereby you at least could get what's happening in this largest, uh, probably the largest of organizations <laughs> in the territory, the government? Yes, well, <clears throat> as you speak, you know, the, uh, you, you might have heard that we have an e-government initiative that is now being, um, you know, being looked at. However, um, you know, we don't know exactly when, you know, that's all going to be, be ironed out. So uh, as, as it is now, you know, even though, as you indicated, a lot of the information is housed in these different government departments and ministries. But the thing is that many of them are not automated to the point where if I say, can you send me such and such data? They can't say, okay, I'll they just can't upload it. Going to computer and, and, and email it to and you. upload it to you. No, yeah. I would have to actually send somebody to physically go and sit in that department because many of the departments they don't want the files and the information to leave the department, the physical files because you know the mm -hmm. in, in a lot of those files there is sensitive information. So in many instances, I have to send someone to sit there and extract what we need from those files and forms and mm -hmm. books and no, I'm not knocking you know knocking the, the process but you know i personally cannot wait until we get to the point where everything is uploaded to my office so then we can have real-time information ready ready to the public ready for the public well it seems then that there's going to have to be a, a real big effort to create an infrastructure or information infrastructure that will have a maximum utilization of the technology. Yes. Well, I, I totally agree that it's going to be a mammoth undertaking, but we have to get there at some point in time because, you know, we can't be left behind. Th that's, that's the direction in which, you know, the, the world is heading. You know, it's information, it's information. And we have to pull away from this manual, you know, mm -hmm. tedious kind of labor because it's, it's counterproductive. Yeah. Now, who's going to have access to the information that uh, you, you're gathering? Can anybody just uh, call up and, and ask the information? How, how is it going to work? Yes, the information is free. So as long as we have it, you call, you send, it, you send an email, you, you walk in, into my office. As long as we have it, the information is, is, is there for everyone. And I mean, I would tell the public to don't, don't, um, don't just listen to, to, to the whispers and if you feel that you need something, come into my office. You might be surprised. Where are you located? Well, I'm located in the Central Admin Complex. The, no. same, the same place? Yes. That way the uh, development planning unit was? Yes, yes. Okay. Oh, yes, the office has, the, the location of the okay. office has not changed. Okay. Yes, so, you know, come in. You and might that's be surprised. The, 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 east, the east wing? The east wing of the Central Admin the Complex. Central yeah, once on you come in and you ask for CSO on the, on the second floor, the third floor, actually, the ground the, the first the floor. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, on the third floor. So, you know, come in and see us. I mean, you might be surprised because we have a lot of information. I mean, as, as you indicated earlier, it might be that we might not be able to give you the last year, but we might be able to give you enough for you to, whatever it is research you're doing, you know, to, to make 
a well-informed decision. Okay, great. So we fall on the turn of the clock. Um, this the, the labor force survey coming up. A person's going to be coming around to ask questions to 700 households in the, in, in, in the, very, in the, the nine districts. Yes. Uh, how are they going to be identified? Yes. Every person who forms part of my team, they would have um, an identification tag, you know, indicating their name mm -hmm. and that they're part of the, the team that's um, collecting the information. You know, um, we, we have impressed upon them to be polite. And um, all we're asking is that for persons to understand that we're doing this, you know, for everyone and, you know, just cooperate. Um, if at any time they feel uncomfortable, you know, they can call me, you know, if they feel that, you know, that, 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 that the person that, that if there's was, a complaint, if there's a complaint, mm -hmm. I can always be reached at, um, as I said, at, that, at the CSO, just call, um, the government the, number, you okay. know, 494-3701, ask for the CSO, um, ask from, from, from Mr. Phillips, you know, I, I take all calls. I, I, I don't screen calls. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. because I work for the public. Mm -hmm. So anybody can call me. What time is, um, should the public expect um, the enumerators to come by? Well, because we know that everybody works, practically everybody works, mm -hmm. the enumerators are expected to visit the household between 5 and 9. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we, don't, we don't encourage that they go before because more than likely persons will still be at work. And after, because then we think that that's getting a bit too... Um, yeah, people you know, getting ready to relax and, and go to and bed. That, and, and that kind of yeah, thing, yeah, right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, between 5 and 9 and on weekends, you know, um, if persons are not comfortable with, with the time that someone comes, when they do come, they can always arrange a time for them to come. And I'm sure that we'll be able to accommodate them. Okay, great. Last word, anything I forgot to ask you you want to um, take it well, well, my last word again would be, you know, to make an appeal for persons to cooperate when my enumerators come around. Um, we want to get um, maximum participation here because we want the information to be as representative as possible. You know, because it is such a sensitive issue, we have to get it right. You know, because we don't want at the end of the day when the information gets to the, the policy makers, that they're making policies or they're, 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 they're formulating policies on information that is not as accurate as it can be. You know, so please, you know, we're just begging for your participation and, you know, we'd be very grateful. And as I want to iterate that any information that we collect will be held in the strictest of confidence. Nobody, nobody can call my office and ask for any information from this survey because by law, they cannot get it. Yeah, great. Well, Brother Phillips, it's good to see you as usual. I always enjoy talking to you. I mean, I love statistics and I'm glad to see there's a CSO uh, Central uh, Statistics Office. And I'm definitely going to be using it a lot. You know, I, uh, I, f I forget that it's there sometimes. And I have used it on a number of occasions, as you well know. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to be using it more because I think uh, when you're making a presentation, it's always good to have undisputed data. You know, it's no longer good enough to give your opinion. We are in an age now where uh, everybody's got an opinion. And we really need to know what the facts are. So I'm definitely going to be using that office um, more than I've done in the past. So I'm very glad to see you. Thanks, thanks for coming by. Thanks for being on Spotlight. And don't stay away so long. Don't forget, you got a friend <laughs> on, 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 on radio and television. And anytime you got information to get out, anytime you want the public to know anything, you don't need no bureaucracy. Well, I'm, I'm, you don't need a full of farm. I'm glad to know that. And <laughs> yes, we'll be in touch. Yes, my brother. Thank you very much. And all the best for the new year. Uh, and all you. the best for the survey. Uh, same to you, man. Cool. Uh, you know, we've been having uh, challenges with electricity, there have been some, um, um, what do you call it, uh, load shedding. You know, black house here, black house there. Uh, we got compact, some capacity issues, and we don't quite know what's going on. Well, the spotlight is going to shine on the director of the BVI Electricity Corporation next Tuesday evening here on Spotlight. Make sure you're here. Don't miss it. We're going to find out exactly what's going on regarding our energy generation here in the territory. I want to thank um, Brother Phillips again for stopping by. I want to thank you for watching. Spotlight is seen Tuesdays at 8 p.m. and Sundays at 2.30 p.m. right here on Channel 55 
uh, JTV. Uh, you can follow Spotlight on Facebook. Uh, you can participate in discussions coming out of uh, various discussions, or you can make a suggestion of guests and um, uh, topics that you want to have discuss discussed on Spotlight. I'm Ed Juenka, reminding you that when the Spotlight is on, you see the facts. Peace and blessings. Spotlight is brought to you by Tortola Concrete Limited and H. Lavity Stout Community College.